we finally have One Piece Manga Chapter 992 out, so let's talk about it. First off, the miniseries for Beji, Pound, Lola, and Chiffon seem to be over, and we see the Straw Hats riding on the sea train. And one of the things that I really noticed was Zoro, because he was eating out of a bowl that had a blue dragon design on a moonlit evening. I'm not even sure if this was meant to be foreshadowing of Zoro fighting against Kaido or maybe beating up Kaido. Either way, that's so exciting. And I really enjoyed the colorful cover story for a change. It's really refreshing to say the least. We move on to Big Mom scolding Perospero about the Yonko Alliance, and she tells him off by saying that this was her idea. Which this whole page makes me think that there's going to be a twist. Something along the lines of Big Mom betraying Kaido along the way. Maybe it has something to do with Kaido's death to Big Mom, but I think it's too early to speculate on. Also, it might be useless because <laughs> Luffy and the others might break this whole Yonko alliance up by the end of this war. Anyway, Marco officially breaks off with Perospero and them working together was really because of a mutual interest thing. And that scanlation I read as well as the official translation offer up two different things. One says to defeat the demons, and the other says to vanquish the ogre, which is Kaido. So that's a bit interesting, because that might mean something later on. And it makes me think, right now, that Kaido ate the dragon devil fruit. Because I always thought that Kaido was a dragon that ate the giant devil fruit. But I guess he's an ogre that ate the <laughs> dragon devil fruit instead. So that busts my theory before, and... The conversation of Perospero, Big Mom, and Marco continues on, until Big Mom seems to be getting ready to fight with Marco. Obviously, she was already uh, disapproving of Marco helping the Straw Hats. And this whole conversation makes me believe that it is subtle, but Marco is a real badass without being too cool. right? Some like, someone like Zoro is really cool and really badass, but Marco, he's a subtle badass. The giant sword in their background helps too. <laughs> anyway, we cut to the scene and see Carrot getting ready to take revenge for Pedro. And it feels like she's off to take on Perospero. But since she's with Wanda, I wonder if it's going to be a two-on-one or if Wanda just breaks off and goes back to fighting with Kaido. Nonetheless, I'm really looking forward to see how Carrot will do against Perospero. I think that with her Sulong form, it would be an interesting fight. And I've said it on the previous videos before that I believe that Carrot was going to fight with Perospero anyway because of all of the backstory there. Pedro was basically her Odin, right? So I'm totally hoping for and expecting to see the, this, this fight go down. Because I believe this is going to be the best fight for Carrot in the whole war anyway. Because what can she do against Kaido? <laughs> I don't think she's going to do much there. By the way, this is not a knock on Carrot's abilities. I just feel like doing or handling what you can, even if it's cutting it a bit too close and then succeeding, would be more helpful than just trying to handle something so big that you fail miserably. I mean, that's admirable, yes, but you still fail at the end of the day. Because if you do what you can, you would be helping the team out and you would grow yourself as well, right? Even if it's a close call. Well, I think most especially if it's a close call. Now, we get to the scene where Black Maria takes the place of Hiori in playing the musical instrument while a lot of things are happening. And I really love this because when I saw it in the anime, it was super, super nicely made. And I was kind of disappointed when I thought it was over. So this is something that I'm looking forward to seeing in the anime. But Black Maria was singing a song that seemed like a poetic way of describing what's happening around the background or maybe in focus, but it's kind of like a narrative. Because we see Momo and Shinobu still running away from Horninami 
And basically, what Black Maria was singing about is that. Then on the next page, it was awesome to see the scabbards and Kaido going at it. Kaido still in his dragon form roaring and charging at the scabbards. Super awesome. I'd love to see this in the anime. Because the music is supposed to be playing. Too bad we can't appreciate it on the manga. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the next page as well because the fight continues on. It looks cool seeing all of the scabbards take on the challenge. And in the latest video I was saying that I was hoping for Oda to, to showcase the skills and the combat abilities of the scabbards as well. We're getting it here. I'm sure that Kiko, Denjiro, and Ashura Doji, their time will come, but this is exactly what I said, what I was hoping. Uh. <laughs> A few moments later. But this is what exactly what I was hoping for. Because these consecutive pages had me like, damn! But at the same time, I'm curious with the translation on Kawamatsu's technique. It was, uh, on the official translation, it was River of Sea. I'm not exactly sure what that means. If anyone knows what this means, please comment it down uh, at the comment section below. But moving on, I'm wondering if Neko's Crimson Cat Dance is because it leaves a trail of blood when he uses it or because he's wearing a reddish coat. Not really sure which one. I prefer the blood thing. I think it's cooler. <laughs> But we'll just hope for an explanation from Oda. Inu's attack dug deep into Kaido's tough skin, and he really is a canine scourge. Bruh. But I was really excited to see Izo actually using his techniques that did some damage to Kaido. These could be from Ryu, right? Making his hockey flow in such a way that it looks like donuts. <laughs> Slicing anything in their path. I love the fact that Kaido is thinking to himself why these attacks are damaging him, uh, even when they aren't anything like Odin's. And at this point, I'm thinking that we're gonna get an explanation from Oda really soon, because I really believe that Ryuo in combination with a strong attack is the only explanation that the scabbards are able to hurt Kaido. Maybe even just Ryuo, and the fact that he's wondering makes me lean towards believing that he never got in a fight with somebody that can use Ryuo. But that's just my stand on this whole thing. Then on the next page, it's amazing how Oda just blindsided us. The first thing I see is Raizo burning Kaido. I previously mentioned that everyone in the scabbards can deal damage to Kaido except Raizo. Boy, was I wrong. I never considered the fact that Raizo has an Uno reverse card and he used Kaido's attack against him, which is simply a plain but genius move. Kaido is taking a lot of damage from all of the nine scabbards, and I'm sure that some fans think that he's not as strong as he supposedly is. But I still think that this whole thing is a testament to Kaido's strength. Even with 9 strong characters, he managed to wreck Kawamatsu. That's hard to do, especially when there are other characters that are strong enough to negate your attacks, like Kinemon does. Even on a 1 on 2 situation, that's gonna be hard because the other character could be protecting the other character, right? And in this case, there are 8 other characters that could be protecting that one character that you're attacking. That's already hard to do. And being as big as Kaido's dragon form is, well, it's not exactly like attacks are gonna be easy to dodge. I'm not even sure that Kaido dodged anything from his past, right? From his ba past battles. Because experience probably tells him nothing is going to work. Why the f should I dodge? He might be so used to tanking everything, that pain is a whole different experience for him. A whole new experience for him, or to him. But regardless, we cut to the scene that Odin was teaching the scabbards. And it was explained there that they idolize Odin so much that they want to develop their own style because they might fight amongst themselves. 
over who was the best student. And really, we already know that the Scabbards idolized Odin. But it was ironic because none of them wanted to listen to Odin, which was funny. And ironically, again, they used Odin's technique against Kaido. And they make another X-shaped wound right over the original one made by Odin. And this is the best ending we've had over the chapters made in 2020, at least in my opinion. Anyway, that's all for this chapter. I loved it. 10 out of 10. It was fun. It had a great backstory, even if it was a short one. That's what she said. No. <laughs> I answered the few questions. I, it was action-packed. It had a lot of humor in it. Well, some. And really, it was cool. So, crush like if you liked this chapter. Comment down below what you think about Kaido because of this chapter. And subscribe to the channel so it could grow. And I could provide you with more of that One Piece content that you really, really want. So, stay safe now. Peace.